This is a last memoir on how I got through the worst as an outcast, and who I've become. I post to boost my self-worth and motivation moving on. Having it public makes it feel real for me, to feel I exist. When I exist, self-doubt won't stop my dreams. I mean to inspire more than myself. As always, I'm curious to hear your thoughts. It was the last time greed and apathy revealed my friends and community hostile. I packed and left a city before I felt too sick, which led to my journey now, being a pro boxer one day. Right now, I'm a street beef fighter. The story was a final straw that made me start vlogging sooner than thought. I was weary of snobs othering and ganging up on me. I needed to express on the next level before I drowned in it. I used my past as motivation to better the world one day, because some life events reveal larger social reality. We all went through something that offers insight on how to impact. I want to gain enough influence from fighting to help, because loneliness and despair in my country has certainly risen due to a culture revolving around clout and grind more than meaningful relationships. The mentality creates a vain social hierarchy, where even some who aren't rich belittle the poor. Not just the poor, anyone in a bad spot. How positive your surface image looks becomes your worth as a person. Something coercive and negative in practice. It doesn't just invalidate other feelings as weakness, feelings needed for true happiness and growth when rationalized. It teaches being fake is good. Struggle is preached mainstream as a self-affair, making it hard to understand each other's life. That's our root segregation. It enables all other prejudice, such as racism. It's how nihilism, loneliness, and decadent egos thrive. Some say hardship builds character. I want a future where it isn't necessary to say that. Final chapter, age 27. I left off at the end of a breakup. The drug I got prescribed for the despair made me feel worse, like I didn't have a soul. It disturbed me to where I stopped after a couple doses. Smoking and drinking was never for me either. I laid still till I felt reason to move on, and joined social events posted online. It was tough since college was still locked down 2021. Two of her exes that always hung around before my breakup became family. I stood up for them from the start, having learned they themselves felt used. They were still reeling and crying from the pain. I found one of them stuck in his room coping from it and coaxed him out. He was an artist like me who dropped high school, only he didn't come from poverty. Still, that was enough for me to feel attached to him. Finally, someone relatable, I told myself. He said he dreamt of me before we knew each other, and I indulged the tale as comfort. Before my breakup, I put up with him invading boundaries or trying to get her back, because I half wanted out of how used I felt. Though. He had no shame in his methods, which disgusted me. He'd lie, telling her I'd jealously ask him about his intimacy with her, or he'd leave her other ex to cry on my shoulder while he ran off to reminisce with her when we'd all hang out. I'd still cling to him as family, since I felt no one related more. I couldn't just go from that to feeling alone again. After my breakup, I wanted to heal by making new friends, but he said I'd make him look bad if he let me see his. I was confused as he was awed by my depth and humor. He said I was too sad to be shown since I vented to him sometimes. In practice, he'd also vent, but wouldn't warm up to social groups that I brought him to. The fact lockdown hit right when I looked for friends my age group. Must have had me that desperate. I spent most of my life learning how to be happy on my own, but what resulted was I really craved comrades now. A friend told me his experience venting. If I remember, he'd be ghosted by his closest contacts. He was the most hardworking, talented guy. Someone up a company ladder. He'd also say I was the only coworker who treated him human. Because he was effeminate, some staff wouldn't even talk to him directly unless through someone else. It was cronyism and the dull assumption that you're a burden if you don't hide vulnerability. Back to the first guy. That's the culture that got him. He'd say all pain is your own fault to handle. Typical psychopath stuff that's common belief with how overzealously selfish America is. It's called rugged individualism. The belief that destroyed America with the Great Depression. And also the same trend that made it cool for parents to kick kids out the house at 18. Reality was, he had lots of family support and lived at home. Rugged individualism is for pawns. 
It duped wage earners into slaving more, hoping they'd one day be rich. Work output and rent have far outgrown wages for decades. Only those born with a lot of wealth can afford to be that cold. It's taken so much time and attitude away from developing socially. I believe that's what destroyed families and drastically reduced our interactions to just surface level friendship. And why loneliness is getting out of hand. I fell in love again once my college reopened from lockdown. I had a habit of crushing on the staff. First my ex, now this one. For a year, I felt hesitant to even approach her because I was already overloaded with bad experiences. I wanted to feel better about myself first, so I spent time saving up and learning to cut my own hair. By the time she was invited to the school karaoke club I made, my cutting was still a mess. I had awfully done short hair. I took on an embarrassed manner from it, and she simply went for the first guy I mentioned. When we'd all hang out, there was no more group. It was just her throwing sexual innuendos at him. I was jarred because she'd wear asexual identity like a boast. I calmly let her know I couldn't hang out anymore to avoid heartbreak, but she read my text as anger, in spite of my friendship to her being full of praises. She was offended that I thought she flirted him though admitted it at the end of the story. The guy was still my friend, and they weren't together yet. He owed hundreds I loaned him that he'd pay pickup artists for advice. There wasn't more I could do about their inevitable love. I worked to scrape by versus either of them. He agreed to focus paying me back, as I was about to be short on a car payment. On the pay date, I called him and asked for his help. But he was busy shopping with her. I was crushed. I was doing my best to get over her, but I wasn't even worth help when I needed it. My voice broke in sadness on speaker. She overheard. She took it as more hostility and began the worst talk about me. I stopped eating at this point. She told the group that I used my friends to date her, and that I was like her hated father. She told me that I don't get to decide who hangs out. When I calmly wrote I never used anyone, it was read as more anger. It was seen as a challenge to her control. She'd do group cuddles at her house with the guy who owed and the only other guy in our group, so they were around her finger now. I deeply felt it was manipulative and crude, so I avoided it. I wanted to join the group for their upcoming convention. When I asked, she turned red and angrily barked in my face that it wouldn't be normal if I joined. I respected her as a friend. So imagine sitting there, in front of them, red-faced and othering you. I cried that day. She could have just said no. Labeling me at least deserved an effort to prove. Everyone else wanted me to go, but it was her group now. She said we'd hold a Discord group meeting to approve me. I didn't want to join anymore. I used the meeting to expose her actions. No name-calling or expulsion. Just pointed out her actions and cut my friendship. The jerk that owed me defended her and belittled me the whole session, calling his friends to back him up. He reached out to my friends to convince them I was toxic and that I was telling people to cut her off. He was a solid liar. He convinced my closest friend, who I was never friends with again because of that. The need for acquisition and prestige was seething with them. There's no feeling of remorse for lying or manipulation to get what you want. It's business and hedonism where it counts. It's a culture. She came to school the next day with a bruise on her head. She hit herself because I called her out. When the jerk saw that, he took it out on me, saying I deserved what my ex did, and that I should stop being a little bitch and suck up what people say." End quote. He still owed me, but I ended our friendship there. What gets me is, he'd just tell me to move on, yet lose it over a fraction of what I've faced from either of them. You can't get any more dull and hypocritical than that. He was obsessed with meditation and hypnosis, even arguing that my reflection was inferior. Truth revealed, he was the one with no guts or morals. Once I was out of the picture, him and the other instantly fought for her, and their friendship was done. She continued to have no self-control, one day letting the other grope her in full view of him. She regretted it and broke down to her mom, which destroyed the groper. He told me he felt like dying. 
He's the only person in this story who wasn't in his mid-twenties yet. I finally had my GED and paid for college. I also got caught hosting my club while I wasn't enrolled, so the staff didn't trust me. Something worse was up. At my next club training, everything was off. Several women staff encircled the trainees and I, specifically staring me down like a criminal. They must have thought I wouldn't notice. I felt it and was put on edge. When I was called into the office to explain why I broke the rule, I got asked why I hadn't left the state, since I mentioned moving to someone who didn't work there anymore. It creeped me out because the woman asking didn't sound curious. I explained and the conversation ended with them asking why I wasn't at therapy. It was clear on their face they were judging me for something worse, rather than genuinely wanting to know the situation. So I didn't say much. I was still reeling from the group betrayal. Days later, I got a text from a friend who worked there. It read, They said you bullied club members, end quote. It was about the Discord meeting. The creep vibe at the office then made sense. I felt so hunted and grossed out. And for the last time, I broke down and sent the staff emails about what happened. No response. I also called the school president about it. By now, I felt too nauseous to stay in that city. I was cursed. I was just reliving what school was from my childhood, but no more. I never enrolled again and moved hundreds of miles to try to shake the feelings. There was a snowstorm. I slept in my car for quite a bit till I could afford a place. I was still crying from what happened, so one day I texted the jerk that the girls shouldn't spread rumors. They were together now and called me on the phone. They said it was my ex. They indulged her back when they trash-talked me, which gave my ex a story to spin. They also gave ugly details on how the staff investigated me. My ex reported me to the office as the bully, also reporting that they didn't feel safe at school if I were there. I wanted nothing to do with that person. She even rumored at school that I was physically dangerous by twisting a story from my childhood, as if I weren't disgusted enough. I felt I had to spend the rest of my life scraping filth off my name. These vlogs were made to help with that. The last friendship with my crush ended when she wouldn't stop gaslighting me after all that happened. She wanted me to believe she treated the jerk worse than me, and that I was too defensive to compare to him. That was the ultimate insult after taking the brunt malice from these folk. They all initiated the worst cruelty over nothing. For that, I told her a secret, that he'd call her dumb and average in looks in private, and I ended the conversation. I didn't think something like that should be secret anyway. I felt nowhere to go. I felt empty in the new town, though I made some nice new friends. I tried college there, but felt so shell-shocked about the old one that it felt haunted. I had to quit. All I felt left was the urge to fight for a living, something I never really wanted. Grief caused body pain half my life, so I saw no difference anymore. School just got impossible to focus. It felt evil to even try now. To me, it was a failed self-righteous institution since I was a kid, but my eyes were sewn open to that now. I felt boxing was the only thing that would make me feel loved one day, to have my name cleared. If you saw my other stories, there's only so much negative reinforcement you can let go of before your grades fail and you can't leave bed. That's why I use what happened as energy to try another path. I do what I have to. I further couldn't approach women I liked either. My brain would just associate them with the cruel ones I knew. Not hate, just pure dread. Me being conscious of it doesn't change how it feels. It felt so bad that I'd slip and say not one heart I liked was honest. I think a few were, just not the ones I knew well in person. The cruel ones strangle my memory when writing. A part of me became a product of environment, so I have to steer what's left of me on a meaningful route by all means to keep my self-worth. That's how I began these vlogs and promises to fight for a principle. It's the sum of myself and those who cared that preserved me, writing out my dreams, story, and values poetic as I can, expressing publicly, singing and painting, not letting down the spirit of my historic idols, it bought me enough creative thinking time to be sure about what I have to do now. Fight. 
If I can't do it for myself, I do it for Spartacus, the freedom fighter. Another thing that convinced me to box was what one of my idols said. That if he could go back in time, he would have made business before going to school. He pioneered so much science on reversing old age, yet doesn't get enough investment. I feel like I can make fighting the business needed to help people like him one day. Good thing is, when I began boxing, the ones who fight are often great friends in person. So I found my place, sort of. I easily find ones that felt the same loneliness and betrayal I did, so they don't assume I'm weak for it. The fight name I chose reminds me of the stray who found me years after I first pet him. Everything I stood for had to come together for this one last chance at life. These videos were to help facilitate that. An enchantment for my soul I wanted to share with everyone. Story's done. I just have some notes. When I said how hard finding love is in Vlog 5, I didn't mean getting laid. I meant trust from those who already engaged my love for their benefit. Soon as I got hurt, I wished they never flirted me to begin with. I'm paranoid about it because some project love with mostly sex. In Vlog 5, courtship was a daydream that held me together growing up outcast. That was beauty to me. Once someone decadent toward love played me, I truly felt numb for months and lost myself. I didn't mean I was entitled to love, or that I'd let that situation repeat. Every person in that story was underhanded by this one, like her exes. It felt natural for me to narrate my looks and charm against them at that point, if it bothered some. I know how vain it was of me. Also, sorry if I sounded like I held anything against you, the audience. I never meant to sound like you let me down. The vocabulary was a bit rushed. I wanted to get the stories off my chest in a hurry, so they wouldn't haunt me as much. I had to expose how insecure slogans of privilege have tainted our personal relationships. There will always be good people, but we're being conditioned to see each other as just flings and tools by a system that thinks life should be for sale. I wasn't able to live with that once I felt that used in my friendships and romance. The real friends I have left, I'd risk my life for. Anyway, I don't know when I'll upload again. I have a long fight ahead after getting all that off my chest. This was just meant to make that road less painful and empty. I offer my friendship and hope we can commit to our dreams as one. Live honestly, and you'll find meaning. Take care.